All right, so resistivity is the resistance per unit length and cross-sectional area at a certain temperature of a material. Um, sometimes we call it specific electrical resistance, but it's basically a measure of how much a specific material opposes current. So if we have a material with a certain cross-sectional area and length, then based on this material's resistivity, this whole section is going to give a certain resistance. So the expression for that is R, which is resistance, is equal to rho, which is our resistivity, times length over area. And we can just rearrange that as well to get the expression for resistivity, which is equal to resistance times the inverse of that fraction, so area over length. So if we give area in meters squared, in length in meters, those are going to cancel out to meters, Resistance, we give the unit of ohms, and so that means that we're left for resistivity with a unit of ohm meters. Now, resistivity does depend on temperature, but at a constant temperature for a given material, then our resistivity will be kept constant. So then what we can do is we can increase or decrease the length or the area, depending on which one, and that will actually impact the overall resistance of this section of material if we had current basically flowing from one end to the other. So you could see that an increase in length would cause the resistance to go up with the other two held constant, or a decrease in cross-sectional area would also increase the resistance, or vice versa, a decrease in length would decrease the resistance, and an increase in cross-sectional area would decrease the resistance. So if we just quickly flip back to the previous video, which is right here. If you want to watch it, I'll put a link to it in the top right corner. Um, but basically what I was talking about here was finding the resistance of this resistor in this very simple circuit with a single voltage source and a single resistor. And basically we just determined the resistor to have 4.5 ohms of resistance based on a nine volt battery and a two amp current. And what I had mentioned in the video was that in this level of circuit analysis, we consider wires to have zero resistance. So we can say that truly the voltage drop across this resistor is exactly equal to the voltage supplied. Now in reality, wires do offer some form of resistance that's based on the resistivity, but it's generally so small for little small circuits that it's basically insignificant in our calculation. So let's find out basically how much of a copper wire we would need to provide 4.5 ohms of resistance. Basically just to get some scale on why we consider the wires in these simple diagrams to have negligible influence. So let's switch back to the other screen and let's reorganize the expression to solve for length. So length is just equal to resistance times cross-sectional area over the resistivity. So this will depend on the cross-sectional area of the conductor that we're talking about and also its resistivity. So let's take a copper 10 gauge wire and these have a cross-sectional area of 5.26 millimeters squared, which is equal to 5.26 times 10 to the negative six meters squared. And just so you know, a 10 gauge wire, they're just about like um, similar to, similar size to the width of your pencil, including the, the insulator that's around it. And these are the type of wires that basically come off the back of a solar panel or something like that. Um, but yeah, just for scale with the insulator, it's about the size of your pencil, maybe a bit smaller. And if it's made of copper, then the resistivity of copper at 20 degrees Celsius is 1.724 times 10 to the negative eight ohm meters. And just so you know where these numbers are coming from, you can really easily look these up. Just search the you know, cross-sectional area of a 10 gauge wire, or also you can just search resistivity of copper at 20 degrees Celsius. And these are common values that you'll be able to find really easily online. So let's plug these into the expression. Again, we wanted to find what length of this wire are we going to need to get 4.5 ohms of resistance. Um, so we're gonna plug in 4.5 ohms as our value of R, and then 5.26 times 10 to the negative six meters squared for the cross-sectional area of our 10 gauge wire. And then this is all divided by the resistivity, which is 1.724 times 10 to the negative eight ohm meters. Okay, so we can simplify this a little bit. You can just do this all in one step in your calculator, or if you want to, this is equal to 4.5 times 5.26, all over 1.724, and then times the, the units over here, which were 10 to the negative six over 10 to the negative eight. And you'll see that the units here of ohms cancel out with ohms, and meters squared cancels out with one meters, and this is left with, you know, just times meters. 
and this simplifies to 13.73 times 10 to the 2 meters, which is really just equal to 1,373 meters, or 1.373 kilometers. So that's a pretty long distance of wire, and especially if we're considering a really simple circuit like this one with just one battery in one resistor, there's actually no indication of what the length of this is, but it's probably not going to be over one kilometer in a practical application. And so for that reason, that's why we consider wires in these problems to have zero resistance, but in reality, they do have some resistance. It's just generally quite small. But yeah, that's basically all I want to say about resistivity for now. Um, just know that it is in units of ohm meters and it does depend on temperature. So if the temperature changes, then the resistivity will also change of that material.